QuickBooks Online 2023. Deposits to checking account from payments to deposit or undeposited funds. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want these two things open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito mode or another browser. You can open the incognito mode if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser, open incognito window, Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Type into the search engine, QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We're gonna be using the sample company to look at the difference between the accounting view, the view that Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the view the sample company is in. You can toggle back and forth between the two views by selecting the cog up top and the view change down below. Opening up a couple tabs to put reports in by duplicating, right click in the tab up top to duplicate like we do every time. Right click in the tab up, up top again to duplicate it again. As the tab to the right is thinking, I'm gonna tab to the left, go to the reports on the bottom, open up the balance sheet report. If you're in the business view, by the way, the reports are located in the business overview on the left and then the reports. Then I'm gonna tab to the right, open up the reports on the left again. This time we want the income statement, the P&L, the profit and loss, the income statement, closing up the hand boogie up top, changing the range from 01, 01, 23, tab, 12, 31, 23, tab, run it to refresh it, tab it to the middle, Close the boogie, scrolling up, changing the range like we do every time. 01, 01, 23, tap 12, 31, 23, and run it to refresh it. That's the setup process that we have been doing every time. In prior presentations, we entered some uh, sales transactions, both on a cash-based system and accrual-based system, and that ended up with some amounts in the payments to deposit, which is kind of like undeposited funds, which we're now gonna be putting into the checking account, moving them from here up to there, but doing so in such a way so the grouping will match what we expect to be on the bank statement. And so let's just get a quick recap of that by looking at our chart of accounts. This is the desktop chart of accounts, but we're just looking at the flow, remembering that in our customer cycle, we might have a different you know, setup depending on the industry we're in. Easiest industry, gig work or something. You got paid by YouTube, you get paid by a platform. You just wait till it hits your account. You might use the bank feeds to record the revenue as a deposit. That would be a cash-based system, but even a step easier than a cash-based system, one in which you're recording your books based on the bank rather than using the bank to double check your books, which is the full service accounting system. And then two, you might have a cash-based system, but one which you're gonna be doing the full service accounting system, in essence, recording the transactions first and then double checking them with the bank. And that system, you might be at a cash register, you might be getting paid, you might be getting money at the cash register, or you might, uh, you might be getting credit card sales and so on there. Instead of depositing with the sales receipt directly into the checking account, Oftentimes, you're gonna to want to use the payments to be deposited, the undeposited funds type of account, so that you can then make multiple sales that you will then group together, either by the credit card company, if credit card sales, or bundling the cash together, if cash sales, when you make the physical deposit into the bank, and then you're gonna to want to then enter the deposit in our system, which is what we're gonna do now, so that the groupings are the same that will be shown on the bank. That will allow us to do a bank reconciliation, a very important process for every type of business, large, small, any industry. And so that's what we're going to do uh, at this point. 
if you're in a full accrual service system, you've got the invoicing, then you've got to receive the payment. And when you've received the payment, you're in a similar spot as with the create sales receipt. Now with the receive payment form, it's more likely because you invoice someone directly that the payment is going to be paid by like an electronic transfer or something, in which case it might hit the bank account in the same format as you received it. In other words, you're less likely to get a bunch of $5 sales or something that you're going to have to group together with one lump sum deposit. So I would think most businesses, if you're using a full accrual system would be more likely to be able to record this sales uh, receive payment directly into the checking account than most companies that have to use the create sales receipts at a check register would. Because if you're at a check register, it's quite likely that you're gonna have cash sales or credit card sales, which you're gonna have to bundle up in some particular way to match what's on the bank statement. So therefore you kind of have to use that undeposited funds or uh, amounts to be deposited. I still like using them either way because, because then all my deposits into the checking account will be done with a deposit form as opposed to with amounts increase in the checking account that could be sales payments or receipt payments, sales receipts or deposit forms or transfers. So when we sort the data, it could be a little bit easier if you do the full service system. Now notice how do the bank feeds fit into this system? Usually the bank feeds, if you turn them on, are, are just gonna match out what you already did, which is the full service accounting system. You enter it into the system, you use the bank feeds to help you with the reconciliation process rather than to record the transaction. Although, as we'll see when we get to the bank section, uh, section or course, you could have a bank feed that matches up possibly to the invoice after you create the invoice or after you make the, the receive payment or after you create the sales receipt. We'll talk more about that later. But let's go back on over and I'll go back to the, to the first tab. Now this amount that's in the payment to deposit, if I go to the first tab, that's 28, 70, 85, and I go to that plus button, we've entered invoices, we've received the payment, putting them into that undeposited fund, and we entered sales receipts and put them into that undeposited funds or amounts to be deposited. Now we're gonna to go to the deposit, which note is over here in the other, not in the customer center. Although you kind of think about the deposit as part of the customer cycle. They put it over here, I think in part due to the fact that you might have deposits that aren't from customers, such as those from you or those from uh, a bank, but like getting a loan. But typically this is part of the customer cycle, hopefully. We're going to be putting it into our checking account. So there's our checking account and we'll say the date. I'll just keep it at the 19th for our practice problem. So that looks uh, good. And then we've got these items down here. Notice that these items are pulled in automatically. So it's kind of nice as opposed to these items down below. So in other words, if I'm making a deposit that's coming directly from a payment or a sales receipt, then I really want to use the deposit form so I can use this future to group them together. If I'm making a deposit that's not related to a payment or sales receipt form, then I could use the bottom part of the deposit form and just record the account that I'm going to, like a loan account or an equity account if I put the money into the business. Or I might just go to the register and enter the deposit into the register if I'm just doing something like that. But I have to use the deposit form in this case if I'm trying to group them together be from the amounts that are in the amounts to be deposited because I got this nice feature that allows us to do that. So let's imagine now normally how this would work is, is if you were at a cash register, you would be making sales during the day and then you'd go to the bank at the end of the day, you would count the cash, you'd see that it ties out or see if it ties out to your sales receipts for the day. And then you'd make a deposit at the end of the day for all of the sales that you made. And then we would check them off and here all the sales that were made in the system and group them in this case it's coming out to the 7570.85 we imagine that's what was actually put into the bank account physically so that when we do the reconciliation either with the bank feeds or the reconciliation process it will tie out obviously we did a couple sales before making the deposit because we wanted to kind of group transactions into the same into the same groupings and show you how this kind of works. So we're gonna deposit these two first. And so let's just say, then you got your options down here. You got cancel, clear. 
you can you can print it you don't really need to print a deposit form normally because it's an internal document not an external document it's just for data input recording the transaction not for providing to customers typically and then we've got the save and close or save and new i'm going to go to the save and close and then let's go to the balance sheet let's run it to refresh it let's go into the checking account now and in the checking account we've got the deposit form now this is what i mean by the checking account going up with the type of form if we entered these two forms receive payment and create sales receipts directly into the checking account then you would have increases to the checking account that could be three different types of forms and when you sort for the form which you can do by going up top which is common in a cash account because cash has so many different transactions in it you can then say okay i'm gonna customize the report it's common to use your filtering options and then filter by transaction type so if i'm trying to look at all the increases to the to the report here i'd like to just check off deposits as opposed to also having to find all the other things that could be you know an increase the sales receipts and so on and so now i've got the increases that are all deposits it's not too difficult if you if you're using sales receipts you can add the sales receipts and whatnot but that's just one added little little quirk that's uh it's kind of nice to use the the amount to be deposited or whatever they call it the undeposited funds type account so if i go into it there's our deposit form it's showing as one lump sum not two line items if i then go back the other side should be in the amount to be deposited payments to be deposited they call it which is now down to twenty thousand five hundred and we see the decrease here notice that they put it in here as two line items instead of one lump sum which is nice because in here you can see the increase and the decrease there's the sales receipt i should be able to check everything off at the end of the day this clearing account which is different than a temporary account a temporary account are the income statement accounts that close out at the end of the period on a regular basis what i would call a clearing account like this one goes up and then down usually at a very short time period from zero up and then back down in this case when we put the deposits in to the point when we actually make the deposits uh, into the checking account now let's just do the rest of them now i've got twenty thousand five hundred here so if i go to the first tab and i say the plus button and i make deposit again i'm going to say it's going into the checking account let's put it on plus plus for the 21st and then i'm just going to check the rest of them now i could check them one at a time i could hit the check all of them and it'll check all of them off here so now they're all the payments are included and here's the payment methods that they have that could help you to organize these because if they were credit card payments then you might use that to kind of help you to sort with your credit card company notice that credit card payments can be confusing it often messes people up when you have these intermediary kind of systems because then you have to work with the credit card institutions to see how they're going to group something before they actually put it into your account and you may also have fees and stuff that you have to deal with so what you what you need to do is figure out a system so that you can match on your end by grouping your sales accounts and whatnot what they put in on their end so that you can reconcile and so with with the so that's what our goal is so here we got the twenty thousand five hundred same thing this is going to increase the checking account the other side is going to decrease that <laughs> payments to be deposited they call it like the undeposited funds account let's save it and close it and then go to the bank account and check it out and see if that is indeed what happened let's run it to refresh it and we're going into the check-in account check out the check-in and so there it is the twenty thousand five hundred in there as one lump sum we expect to be able to match that out to the bank using the bank reconciliation or the bank feeds or both and then we've got the payments to deposit notice that this zero is still here because quickbooks by default i think very nicely these days is showing the zero balances if there was activity notice that if you went up top here and you you changed this item to say uh, i don't want any zeros then it's not it's not going to show here it's still showing there let's run it there it doesn't show so for external reporting you might want to get rid of that zero but i think they properly did active item by default because for internal reporting that zero is important because then i can click on it 
and I can see the detail of, of the increases and decreases in the account, which is great. That's what I want to see. Went back down to zero, just like a clearing account should. So that looks good. Now I'm going to imagine I just changed the date on this other one we put in here just to show you how you can change it. If I go into the, the cash account and I determined, well, the date on this one was wrong. I'm going to bring it up to the 20th. I'm just going to click on it. So this would be, if you're following along with a practice problem, I'm just going to hit the plus button, bring it up to 20. QuickBooks is quite forgiving on that, but be careful doing that in practice. But often you're going to have date range issues in a practice problem. So, so you, so you want to, you know, be aware of that, that you can drill down and adjust the date and that can fix stuff. If you're doing that in a prior period in, in practice, then you want to be very careful. Uh, but just, just note that you have the capacity to make those adjustments. Okay. Let's go to the trial balance. We're going to tab to the right. Notice there was no impact on the income statement, by the way, we just transferred it from one cash account, a holding account, a clearing account to another. We recorded the sales when we made the sales, either with an invoice or a sales receipt, the things that are creating the income statement are the invoices and the sales receipts. Sometimes deposit forms can be used to create the income statement. If you're just recording sales with a deposit form, such as if you got paid by YouTube, like gig work or something, but that's not natural to the system. Most of the full service accounting systems would use invoices and sales receipts, invoices for an accrual system, sales receipts for a cash based system to record the revenue side on the income statement. Okay, so then we're going to go to right click on the tab, duplicate it. And let's go to the reports on the left hand side. And then close up the boogie and type in trial balance because I want to open the trial balance. So you're going to type that in so you can find it so that then you can open it. And then we're going to go from 010123 tab 123 tab, run it to refresh it. This is where we stand left leg being the debits right leg being the credits. If you match out to what we have here, great. If not, try changing the date range. If there's a change on the range, when you change the range, then uh, you might want to drill down on the data and possibly change the date. Again, something that could be quite useful in practice, uh, a practice problem, but be careful in practice. When doing that, we'll do a transaction detail report at the end of the month's worth of data input, which will help us to check our numbers for that month of data input as well.